Um, what we've got today is we've got a really fun segment to talk about AI ops. So I had a long joke, but I'm not going to tell it because we got two guests. We got a lot of fun stuff to talk about on this week's Nerd Log. So it's time for the Nerd Log. Uh, Ali, you've been away for a week, so you want to say hi to the people? You tell them what, the, what you, you, you relic? Hi, everyone. I'm Ali. I'm at Ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft. You're going to hear this every week, so don't forget it. Yeah. And I'm a senior developer relations engineer here at New Relic, and I Twitch stream almost every day on my own Twitch channel, so you should come check it out. I'm so excited to be back. And we're glad to have you back. Uh, I'm Yoshnika. Again, I'm the host of the Nerd Vlog. You've seen me on every Nerd Vlog. It is not something wrong with your camera. I do, in fact, have titanium teeth. And... I uh, am a serverless mom everywhere. Even though I mainly talk about Kubernetes and containerization, I'm still serverless mom. Uh, I'm a serverless mom on TikTok, where you can mainly see, make, see me making TikToks about how uh, I, I, don't, I don't really get sandworms. I don't get how that works. Like, I know they're big, but how do they eat metal stuff? That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, like, I'm a big lady, but you don't see me, like, just, just chomping on a Pepsi can, you know? Uh, think about it. Uh, and we've got one guest. Uh, to start with, we're talking about AI ops with Shahar. Shahar, say hi to the people. Tell them what you do for New Relic. Hi, everybody. I'm Shahar Brenner. I'm director of product management in the IA group uh, in New Relic. Welcome, everybody. All right. And, and this is, I think, your second time on the Nerd Blog. We had a really fun time before, but I, you know, that was quite a while ago now. It was like half a year or something. So we've had a lot of changes to AI ops. And so uh, why don't we just dive right into it and see what it is that you want to show us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, everybody can see my, my screen share, right? I'm going to start it right now. I'm sending it live. It's sending live. It is live now. Awesome. So what we're seeing here is the, uh, the Neuralic AI landing page, the overview that we have today. Um, and the big news that we want to talk about today is that we're opening the uh, AI ops platform uh, to everybody for free. Uh, as part of the full stack observability plan in New Relic. And these are great news because we're doing that because we see our users as partners. Um, there's no hidden charges. There's, um, uh, there's no uh, surprises on the way. Uh, we really want to provide our users something that they can benefit and they can, they can use as part of the New Relic platform and not as an individual product. So one of the shifts we're really seeing, and sorry to interrupt, but one of the shifts we're really seeing at New Relic, and we talked about it a little bit, is how we really kind of want everybody to get in on observability, right? We 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 see these industry reports that say that most developers, as opposed to like operations people, use no observability tools at all, meaning that they really don't know how the code is running, you know, in production, like at all. And I really think that AIOps is a really good entry point for this. Obviously, like you know, code level instrumentation or, or of course our new tool like CodeStream is of course worth talking about. But I think that one of the big things that, you know, developers are very often, you know, it's like, okay, the operations people will tell me if something's down or broken or what have you. So I'm not going to keep an eye on the sort of, you know, are we up or down? What's our response time? But I really think that the, you know, AI piece and the anomaly detection piece is really powerful because it lets you see, hey, something may be growing here, Right. And that might be something that as a developer, you really might be interested in saying, hey, notice this one transaction is taking up tons more time. It's growing and changing since, you know, maybe since a code change. I think that can be really powerful. But anyway, I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before I start, you touched upon some really interesting points. So, yeah, so like um, AI ops can address multiple, uh, um, let's call them, um, present problems that have mm -hmm. arised with the digital transformation and a lot of changes in the space. Um, you know, what, one big one would be like noise reduction when today uh, our users are facing floods of alerts. Um, another one would be the, the concept, again, that, that you mentioned, the uh, uh, anomaly detection. So what, what is out of the ordinary? You know, what, what is happening that I don't know that I need to know about? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's a really good way to put it. It's like the stuff, the, the unknown unknown, right? It's like we don't know exactly. that we should be watching this. Yes. Um, and and we've, we've, had this, uh, we've had this in your relic for uh, over two years, and we keep improving that. And uh, we listen to our users. We're following the market. Um, and specifically today, what I wanted to share is that the... Uh, the applied intelligence product is evolving. 
we're introducing a, a new product menu to streamline the journey of detection and incident response. So the first thing you'll probably notice if you're using this already is that the navigation looks slightly different. Everything that we had there is still, is still in, uh, in place. It's just slightly in a different location. Um, we did this to better match the configuration and incident response journey. Uh, our users are performing each and every day. So before um, it was more on, um, on a product-based menu. Now we're more on a, on a path, on a journey base. So we have like the uh, analyze, the detect, the correlate, and reach and notify. And we still have the classic product uh, as part of the menu. Um, beyond that, so what's what's new other than some, some movements in the menu? We have destinations and workflows under enrich and notify. Destinations are uh, the, the minimum credentials you need in order to uh, integrate with a third party tool. Um, so this is something that we're continuously going to add more and more integration to, and we're going to make it more dynamic uh, than it was up until now. The, the second feature, uh, we call it workflows. So if you used in the past uh, incident intelligence, we had pathways, and uh, this is kind of a successor, a more successful successor. Um, basically, what workflows does is allows you to send what you want, where you want it. The input to workflows is everything that uh, happens in our detection, whether that's classic uh, violations or anomaly violations, everything flows in and um, you can filter the right things that would get to you and send it where you need it. So for this demo, let's, let's give it a, a Twitch demo name. And here we can build a query um, in a quite intuitive and dynamic manner. So we let's filter by, by policy name that contains, I'll just pick these two. So um, these two policies. And as you can see, the values are pre-populated and you can do it pretty dynamic. So what you can use this for is if there is one organization and each team needs to get what they need, this is how you would do it. You do it either by policy name, you would do it either by uh, service name, any other entity type that you'd like, you can use in order to filter the issues that you wanna later send. The next step here is optional and that's, that's enrichment. Why do we need that? So we have a basic schema that we send out as a notification, but a lot of the times you want more data. And as we mentioned before, Neuralic is a platform and there's data from a variety of products within Neuralic that you might want to use when you get the notification or the ticketing, um, the, the ticket. So let's build real quick an enricher. So I'll, I'll give it a name so we can use it afterwards and refer to it. And here I'm, I'm running um, Query. I'll run this. What's going to happen is that I'm going to save this by this name. And when I use it at runtime, the query would run and it would populate the variable. Now we go to the um, almost next step, which is notify. Here you can customize the notification message. I'll go and pick webhook for this demo. And here I prepared before destination, a webhook endpoint. I, I called it Twitch demo. You can add custom headers if you need. But here what you see is a very uh, useful and dynamic interface for webhooks. On the left side, you see the default schema that we have. On the right side, you see a payload preview that uses um, the, the key value pairs. So obviously you can edit this and you can remove stuff but you can also add really cool things. So let's say my endpoint and, uh, is expecting a field called um, which, which field. And I want to populate that with the uh, a result of the query that we use for the enricher. So I'm going to start typing twice the curly brackets and um, 
Oh, wow. Here at the top. That is pretty nice UX. I'll we see can actually end. see, once you finalize this, we're actually going to see like what the payload would be. Well, I'll let you finish. Exactly. That was a, that was a wild guess, um, an educated guess. So here at the top, we see the enricher. And underneath, we see all the different attributes that are not necessarily part of the default schema that you can use to customize your message. So for here, we're going to use this. I'm going to format as a JSON. And then we can see on the right side um, that, let's see if this is it. Let me see why it doesn't work. The, this is real bravery to try to get your curly braces and such to match live. That's the sort of thing I, I will not do. Like, I will not write an RQL like live on stream. But, uh, but yeah, let's see if we can. This is Every's developer's live coding nightmare curly braces. We all live to fear is like, uh, you know, oh yeah, and I need to close all these. One, two, three, four curly braces. That should do it. No messages from the IDE. And then, and then there's always something. <laughs> At least there's no semicolons. Mm -hmm. No way it doesn't work here. Um, let me just try the furniture. Um, no worries. Let's use the page URL. Like that. It passes. Hey. hey, let's can we can we zoom in a step to see this? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I mean, and again, I mean, this is always the thing, right? It's like you know, we broadcast in seven twenty p, so it's like you know, uh, we, we're never gonna you're never gonna be able to go in and be like, wait a minute, there's a drop bit variable there, right? Like you know, uh, yeah. that's, it's that's always got the, the nature of coding on Twitch, line. right? But uh, yeah, oh, that's really neat. So so then if we update that message so that that will change what the body is that's populating that incident. Yes. So now I customize the message. I customize the payload in the webhook. And now I can, I can basically, I can also run a test workflow. So what this would do is it would, um, if you've seen before within the webhook that, that uses, that used dummy values, the key, the key value pairs that use some dummy values. But here, what happens when I test the workflows, it goes and based on past data, it goes and, and, and runs through the filter and retrieves real data. It runs the enricher and it goes to the custom notification to the, to the real endpoint, to the real destination that you chose here, and it sends a test notification. So you can see uh, what it would really look like, not just with dummy data based on your real data. So this is super powerful. You can really validate that this flow is working before you activate this. Yeah, um, I, I love the idea of getting to, to say like, hey, I don't want the full object. I want the stuff that I think actually will be useful to enrich that data, especially like if I'm like looking on Slack on my phone, I don't want to be scrolling through like every IP address that, that generated the alert or what have you, right? Like I want to be able to say, hey, these are the actual key value pairs I would care about and get a sense for like, Okay, that's that's beefy, right? So like send a test one that's like, okay, this will be a lot of scrolling when you go to look at Slack or what have you. Yeah, yeah. And and go going one step back, you know, there's frustration when you try to configure something. You think you did it well and you're waiting for it to work, but it doesn't work and you have no idea that it doesn't work. So yeah. here you have a way to kind of mitigate that and you know, um, happy customers. Happy product. Yeah, um, I, I remember well when in like, you know, uh, 2012 or something, like a lot of the successful APIs were the ones that had some kind of preview tool, right? Like it wasn't about that the data was better or it was faster or lower latency or even more useful. It was just like there was some way to check that it was working before you just went and deployed it on, you know, on production and then just sent a bunch of people notifications of like, there's a problem at object object, right? Like, Oh, yeah. And you know what? You want to guess 
Uh, how did we get to adding this button, the test workflow? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, uh, probably <laughs> because it broke for you and it never deployed right. So, so um, in a way, um, we got we got it from user feedback, right? Yeah. So it, it goes back to us listening to our users. We we understand what are the needs, and we we we, we are really looking to make an impact. And and um, making this flow work is an impact on our users. And um, yeah. like New Relic, like actually listens. If you're a user of New Relic yes. and you drop feedback into like at any point when you're on our website, that goes directly to the PMs and they're reading them. Yeah. So like, be if you have like good feedback, there's you don't even need to put a negative star. Just give the positive stars or however you're feeling, and they'll get it. They'll see it. So like, definitely, this is a great example of the user feedback came through, and this is what you asked for, which is yeah. super cool. It really is true, and in fact, like especially if it's something like this, or like an integration is not making a lot of sense to you, or doesn't feel smooth, or just sort of isn't easy to get information out. Like that's something that, uh, of course, we're all going to care about right away. So this is this is awesome, and I love the fact that we're going to see everybody, you know, including our free two users who are really the basis of New Relic, uh, are going to be, uh, you know, try this out. I think you know, for some of them, it'll be them having kind of their first experience with anomaly detection on their stack. Do you have recommendations for how people should get started or what a good first step would be? I mean, this is a good one. I mean, look, look at what your actual notifications are, make sure they're decorated well is, is a fantastic one. So if, if you're already a new, a new Relic user, then you're most likely using our detection product. So um, either give it a try yourself or through the, uh, the account team, give it a try and if, if there's any need for a product to be involved and, and assist and guide and train, we'll do whatever it needs to, to make this um, uh, useful. And on the feedback aspect, again, any feedback is welcome. Not just a thumbs up, also a thumbs down. Something can be done better always. And just just one last thing to wrap up this. Of course. Um, we're, we understand that every organization uh, and sometimes even every team is different and um, our product requires defaults with the options to customize. So each one of the destinations that are here and are going to be added in the future uh, allow for customization. For instance, ServiceNow would retrieve the fields and would allow you to map whatever attributes from, from your relic to the relevant uh, fields that you have in ServiceNow similar to, to Jira. So we would retrieve the data from the project and you can map things to suit the structure that you have defined in Jira. Um, so that's that's something that is, uh, I think, also super powerful. And again, you know, dealing with enterprises and really serious customers, uh, that was kind of a commodity that we, we wanted to, uh, to deliver. Yeah, and I, I, you're, teeing, you're teeing us up so well because... Up next, if you're watching live, if you're not watching live and you watch this pre-recorded, this segment came out first. So you have to wait a day to see this next segment. I'm sorry, but that's just the, that's 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 the reality. I mean, I can't I can't do anything about that. I can't I can't change time. But soon you'll be looking at a segment on Jira integration with Adam Johnson. So let's say thank you so much, Shahar, for coming and doing the piece. We'll go to be right back, and we'll be back in a second on the live stream. If you watch this pre-recorded. You know, I don't even believe in the point, right? Thanks for coming out and checking it out. Check out the Nerd Blog every Thursday. And uh, check the links down below to, to see how to get started. And uh, yeah, sign up for New Relic today and, and do try uh, some AI detection for your staff. Okay, going to be right back.